Now that the 2000 gallon aquarium has been set up for a few months, the number one question that I get about this is, how the heck are you going to clean this thing? So in today's video, I'm going to cover just that. I'll show you everything that I do to take care of this aquarium. And I got to tell you, I've letting it get out of hand recently purposely. So we actually have something to do here. Now, I know many of you don't have a 2000 gallon aquarium and probably never will. I hope you do. However, there's a lot of information I'm going to talk about that you're going to easily be able to apply to much smaller aquariums or potentially give you ideas for some future aquariums. So when it comes to maintenance, the first thing I do is turn off all of the return pumps as well as the circulation pumps. I shut the pumps off for a simple reason. I know that I'm going to be doing a large water change and I'm going to be cleaning the inside of the tank. I'd rather have the water change remove any debris as opposed to it getting trapped in the filters again and, you know, simply having to remove it all over. But, you know, it's kind of up to you. However, the water level is going to drop quite low and I don't want water splashing all over the place or pumps running dry. Plus, when you're working in and around an aquarium, you shouldn't really have any electrical components running. The next thing I do is I just take an old towel and you'll notice that the lids are covered in water, not from splashing, but rather from evaporation, condensation. I wipe these off. I do it for a couple of reasons. One, it allows the, uh, the lights to penetrate through these polycarbonate lids a little bit easier. But you guys also know that, you know, moisture uh, promotes mildew and mold. And with a tank like this, if mold and mildew builds up to it and, it's, and the water's still evaporating and, and building up on the lids, eventually it's going to start dripping back into the aquarium. So usually about once a week, I'll clean this. I think at most I could usually go maybe two or three weeks before, you know, there's an issue. I've never technically had a problem with this or kill any fish, but you never know. And so you definitely want to wipe your lids off every once in a while if you can. Now the next thing I'm going to do is actually clean off all the algae that's grown uh, on the back panels as well as in, on the viewing panels. And I know I said I wasn't going to do this, I was going to leave it uh, and get a more natural look. But to be honest with you, I don't really like it that much. It is growing, but it's growing in too patchy and it's not covering everything that I want it to. So I will be removing it. And in order for me to clean all of this off efficiently and rather quickly, I can't use a regular algae magnet. The walls are eight inches thick and the front panels are one and a half inches thick. Not to mention, it's four feet deep, so this makes it quite difficult. So what I do is I just check out cleaning supplies at different stores and see if I can find these shower scrubbers. Now, I've shown you guys these before. I've been using them since I had that 540 gallon aquarium, even before then, so, you know, seven or eight years now. Um, and they come in all different sizes and whatnot, but what I like about them is they are telescopic. They will rust over time, so they only have a life with your aquarium of about a year, but for 10 bucks, it's not that bad. You can also replace these pads. You could do it by hand, or you could put it right on here. Now, will it scratch acrylic? I haven't found it to scratch acrylic, and it does just fine on glass. The benefits of it is it gives me tons of reach, so I can get into the bottom of the aquarium, uh, and it has corners, so I can do the corners and edges of the tank as well. Now, one thing I'm going to mention is it's come up a few times and that is why don't you have a lot of sand in the aquarium? And you'll notice all around the perimeter of the tank uh, along the front viewing panels, the sand is pushed back. And that's simply because the rays swim up the front and when they come down, they push the sand back. So regardless of how much sand I add to this aquarium, they're going to keep doing that. So it's an ever uh, never ending battle. The only thing I can do is maybe add you know, six to eight inches of sand into this aquarium to combat that. But doing that's going to cause me all kinds of issues with that sand compacting, creating anaerobic regions within it, releasing nitrogen gas eventually. It's just going to cause the tank to eventually completely crash, kill all the fish. So they're going to do it no matter what. So why not just add a proper amount of sand, only about a half inch throughout the aquarium, let them enjoy it. It's not gonna cause me any problems and it's super easy to keep clean. Now I'll come back to the algae in a minute, but here's what I do to keep the, the sand clean. So I use the same tool as I do for cleaning the algae off, except I just take the pad off and then I'm exposed with this rigid plastic end that's going to allow me to kind of turn the sand over and I'm just gonna put it in the sand 
and kind of lift it up, turn it over, make sure that it's um, getting oxygenated and, there's, and it's releasing anything that's trapped under it so it can be removed. Then, of course, once we've cleaned up the sand, we can go right back to scrubbing the algae off the tank. Now, I don't look to do a perfect job when scrubbing the tank of the algae. I just remove most of it, and I'll be okay with that. But I must say, I'm actually a fan of algae and welcome it into my aquariums. It does a number of things for us. For, for example, it removes nitrates and releases oxygen into the aquarium, and you really can't go wrong with that. Now, of course, after cleaning the tank, it's going to be incredibly cloudy, looking quite dirty, but don't worry, the water change we're going to do in a moment is going to take care of this. Now I can do my water change as well as clean the canister and the fluidized bed filter. The first thing I need to do, though, is turn the pumps back on to the canister. Now what's going to happen, clearly, is the water is just going to start flowing back through it and back to the main aquarium. Now there is a bunch of media within the canister. It looks just like this stuff. This is a fluidized media, except for in here, it's actually black. And when the filter's running, it's statically running, meaning that the, the media isn't moving around like you would expect to see in a fluidized filter that I'll show you running here in a minute. In here, it's static. It's just, it's just in there, sitting there. And it's filled to the top here almost. Water's going to be pumped through it, and it's mechanically and biologically filtered at the same time. Which is pretty simple, but there's a downside to that. You see, just because you remove something from your aquarium doesn't mean it's not in the system anymore. You're sucking out all that debris and fish waste, and you might not see it in the main tank, but it means it is somewhere, and it's still rotting and decaying and contributing to you know, deteriorating the water quality on a daily basis. So you want to keep your mechanical portion of your filters extremely clean. With the sump up here that I built, really easy. With down here, I have to basically do a water change at the same time because the way it works is, even though it's static right now, with the pumps running, as soon as I put it on backwash, what's gonna happen is inside, the water is going to uh, start to fluidize the media. It picks it up and stirs it all up and the wastewater comes out. If we look at this little uh, glass bottle here, you can kind of see all the debris that is kind of picking up and flushing out. So we kind of wait for that to go clear and then we can put the filter back on. But I'm doing a water change at the same time because this is sucking water from the main aquarium and pumping it outside. Now you might actually think this is a waste of water, but if you guys remember, this here used to be a six foot deep hole and six feet wide. This is where I ran my water lines. I'm still working on it, but basically I use all that fish water to water my lawn. And I guess, you know, I still have a lot more work to do, but it is coming along. The next thing I do is I clean the pre-filter to the fluidized portion of the filtration system. Now, this is an interesting part because a lot of the times as aquarists, sometimes we'll put things off, including cleaning our filters or cleaning the tanks or, you know, not for me. I want to create things that uh, allow me to make things incredibly simple to do, really easy, yet... Um, at the same time, I need some backup plans. If this clogs, I want the filter to still run, but I also want a clear indication as to when it needs to be cleaned from a distance. So what I've done is I've taken a sponge that's cut the, the exact dimensions of the inside of the container, and on the outside, I wrapped this pre-filter, pre, uh, filter floss basically is what it is, and you can see it's absolutely filthy right now. But what happens as this goes in that chamber there, water has to flow up through it. But it's not in there tight enough so that, uh, it will clog and the pump will stop working. What will happen is it will, if, if it gets this dirty, it will clog and it will lift up and water can still flow and everything can function properly. Not a huge problem, but it's also a clear indication that I just need to grab this, replace the floss with a new piece and toss it back in. Now the sponge itself doesn't get clogged up. It doesn't get filthy. There's no uh, debris on it or anything like that. It's actually filled with bacteria. So a lot of the times I don't even bother rinsing this off. Uh, or I haven't at least yet, but I'll take a filter floss and I'll wrap it up and we'll go put it back in place. And when this clogs, it just lifts up again, lets water bypass back into place. And as you can see, it slides in there quite tightly and I just put it down arm's length. So water has to flow up through this before it can get into this chamber here. And if uh, it gets clogged or anything like that, it's going to lift up before there's any uh, other issues. 
And believe it or not, in the time it took us to change the pre-filter and the fluid ice sump, the water in the canister filter has gone clean. So we're just gonna turn it off from the backwash. We'll go to rinse and um, give that a couple seconds like that. Then we put it back into the filter mode. So water is no longer going through the exit. It's gonna come right back to the aquarium, just like that. So that's just the uh, sump or the canister filter alone. And as you can see, we've changed about 20% of the water in that time. It takes very little time at all. But if I want, I can go ahead and change a lot more. But for today, I don't really have a lot of time. The parameters of the water, nitrate's not even traceable right now. So I'm just gonna change a little bit here just to give you guys an example. So the tank is filled back up, all the equipment is turned back on and that essentially concludes the maintenance for this 2000 gallon aquarium. I'd love to know if you guys thought it'd be a lot more if, or if it's pretty straightforward and simple, very similar to a much smaller tank. I mean, we gotta clean the, the glass, we have to you know, turn over the substrate, do our water changes, clean our filters. Basically, it's the same type of thing you do with any type of aquarium. However, in my opinion, this 2000 gallon aquarium is much easier to care for than the rest of my aquariums that are only a fraction of the size. And here's why. You know, ultimately the filtration system is almost maintenance free. We're running a fluidized filter. This never has to be cleaned and the media never has to be replaced. As you can see though, I do have some uh, ceramic media on the bottom. That's just cycling for other aquariums for when I set them up. I always tell you guys to have additional cycled media that you can use for other aquariums on standby. It's always a good idea. And I just chuck it in the sump here. If it wasn't there, this would be fluidizing a lot better. As you can see, it's stopping it, but uh, it's not causing a problem with the efficiency of the filter. So all I have gotta do here is replace the polyester filling every other day. You know, and sometimes I'll do it every second day. It's not that big of a problem. It only takes me a couple seconds and I get to remove, you know, some of the organics from the aquarium. So no problem at all. As for the canister filter, I don't technically do this a lot. Uh, I do this maybe once a week or every other week. You know, it's, it's very straightforward. Hook up a hose, put it into the backwash cycle and that's it. At the same time, I get to do a water change, but even then, I don't really have to do water changes. You see, currently I only do those water changes because I have to replace the water that the canister removes. Why not do water changes on a 2,000 gallon aquarium? Well, I run a drip system. I've shown you guys these for years, how to set up and various methods on how to run them. But for me, essentially it is a continuous water change system. It's constantly adding fresh water into the aquarium, diluting the pollutants in the tank. Not eliminating water changes, but, a set, but very much so prolonging the need for water changes by an extreme amount. For example, I might do a water change of 20% once a month if it's needed, but because I have to clean the canister filter, which I probably clean too much, it's getting a 20% water change every week or two. So not a big deal there, but when do I do the water changes? That's really dependent on the conditions of the tank. I monitor the fish and if they start to act differently after I do my water changes, I'm certainly not doing them enough, but of course you can monitor the perimeters uh, of the aquarium or the parameters of the aquarium, like the uh, nitrate and make sure they don't get too high. I'll show you guys the drip system quickly. So I have a pressure regulator attached to my cold water intake. This is make sure that no more than 20 PSI or 20 pounds per square inch is how much pressure is coming through this line. I'm constantly adding uh, fresh water to the aquarium. Now this line leads to my sump. I let it flow up into the sump and then into one of the overflows where it's added directly back to the aquarium. Now once in the aquarium, that water has to go somewhere you, or you're gonna overflow your tank and just flood your room. So right here, as you can see, that's an overflow. When water rises, that extra water is going to overflow out this pipe, out the back, through this wall. Then I just let it drain out this pipe here. So I'm continuously adding fresh water to the tank and it's a drip system, like I said, is basically just runs off a dilution process. So change the pre-filters every once in a while and that's pretty much it. Everything else kind of takes care of itself. I have enough circulation within the aquarium to remove any debris from settling on the uh, floor of the tank and let the filters take care of that. Uh, other than that, feed them, enjoy them, and show you guys them.
So that's how I clean my 2000 gallon aquarium. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and kind of got some basic insights and, you know, maybe a better understanding as to how a few things work. And uh, obviously it's not as difficult as it might seem. But there's still so much I want to talk to you about and show you about this aquarium because a few things have changed, uh, in including how I'm heating the aquarium and, uh, you know, how some of the equipment is set up and running and how I'm actually saving about half the money I used to that it cost to run this tank. And I'm saving about half of that now. So I'd like to make another video on that. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section below. Also last week I asked you guys to give my video a thumbs up and you guys did 10,000 likes within hours. I was absolutely blown away by that kind of support. I'd love to see you guys do that again and see if you can do even more. So leave me a like as well as a comment. It certainly supports me and helps me out tremendously more than I ever could have imagined. And of course, if you're not subscribed to this channel yet and these are the types of videos you enjoy seeing, Make sure you subscribe because I do this three times a week.